My name is Shazwan. I'm on a TED Talk. Really nervous when I look at you all talking about the fight for the better me, talking about my best friend and my enemy. Uh, that's me. Can everybody do a favor for me? I'm about to say it, so get ready. Raise your hand if you've taken the MRT. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Anyway, hi, uh, my name is Shazwan. This is who I am, as you can see. I'm a year two student in Nanyang Polytechnic and I'm studying social work. People also know me, uh, know another, another side of me. Um, I'm actually also a music artist. I, I, I rap, as you could see. And I go under the name Abang Sapao. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? So, yeah, I mean, before I begin, I'd like to thank the organizers for having me here today. And also, uh, I actually have quite a bad cough. So every time I cough, okay, if you all could just clap for me, that would mean the world, you know. Okay, so let's just try this, okay? <coughs> okay, cool, solid, nice. Next up. So let me tell you a little story. Two years ago, uh, it was another regular day at school. School started at 8 a.m. I woke up at 9 a.m., so I was late. So I got up, brushed my teeth, washed my face, threw on my uniform, didn't bathe, uh, dashed out of the house. Now usually, usually, I could choose between taking, usually I would take the bus to school, but this time, because I was late, I had two choices. Take the MRT or take Grab. But as most of us know, uh, private hire transport isn't exactly the most wallet-friendly option in the early morning peak hours. So I chose the MRT. I walked to the MRT station, tapped into the gantry, and this is what I saw. <coughs> I had two choices to go upstairs. Take the escalator or take the staircase. So first I looked at the escalator. It was very long, very crowded. Oh, warding like penguins waiting for their turn to come up. <laughs> Has anyone seen this before? Yeah. Come on, surely you have, right? And then I looked at the staircase and it was practically empty. No one wanted to take the stairs. So I stood there and I was like, damn, which one should I take? Now look at me, I'm a big guy, I'm fat, okay? So obviously I wanted to take the escalator. But despite being sweaty and out of breath, I decided to take the stairs. Now why did I choose to take the stairs? The reason why I shared a very simple story about the MRT is for one very simple reason. In life, sometimes, you will face situations that are challenging. And in challenging situations, you have to make difficult decisions. That little story was a very simple portrayal and illustration of that. I'm a fat guy. I didn't want to take the stairs. I wanted to take the escalator so much. But I knew that if I wanted to catch the train that was coming, I had to dash up the stairs to get in the train on time. Challenging situations equals difficult decisions. What you can focus on whenever you're facing a challenging situation is to focus on what you can control, that you're always in power of something. Your best friend and worst enemy, you. I like to call my best friend Batman. You all heard of Batman, right? Please tell me you all have heard of Batman. If you heard of Batman, can I hear a little clap? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Batman. Okay. And I call my worst enemy the Joker. So, what does this mean? In every situation that you face, you have two choices. It all boils down to these two choices. Will you act based on the Batman within you or based on the Joker within you? See, the Batman within you is the optimist, the person who believes that I'm always in control in something. And the Joker within you is the one that tells you, ah, a lot of things have already happened. I don't think I have the power to change anything. I'm going to just let it be. There will always be two sides to you whenever you're facing a challenging situation. This was me when I was 13 years old. I grew up in a family of extremely talented individuals. Some of my family members were artistically talented, musically talented, athletically talented, academically talented. And for me, I, I didn't really amount to much. I tried to play soccer for a while, but you can all see how that turned out for me. So, and it did help that I was a disruptive student. I was a very, very rude person. In fact, when I was in secondary one, I was so rude to my teacher that he actually fainted and the ambulance had to be called in. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm not even joking. I still remember his name. Mr. Fong, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> really? 
My mom had to come down to school many, many times to check up on me, discipline masters calling all the time. Things weren't really going great. Until, I think because I was so good at answering back, my teacher decided that, hey, since you're so good at answering back, go for this public speaking competition. I was like, what? I was the worst student in my class, the worst student in my level. My report book said, it said 109 out of 109 in terms of level position. I was the worst student. I was the underdog of that competition. So I went in there. I just did what I had to do. Somehow, I emerged as champion for that competition. Somehow. But then, but then, things took a turn. After everything that happened when I was in secondary one, came secondary two. In secondary two, I became a victim of bullying. The bullying got so bad that I didn't even dare to walk around school alone for fear of being harassed. It got so bad that I dropped from the express stream to the normal academic stream. It got so bad that I had to transfer schools. And in, on that same year, my parents divorced. We lost our complete family. My grandfather passed away. And we lost our home with no idea on where to stay next. Then I transferred schools. This was me in my new school. Once again, I look at this guy, and look at this guy. Kind of different. This picture here is us getting kicked out of class, history class. Took a selfie there. <laughs> this picture is a very common occurrence. Always outside the general office, being scolded by someone, either Mr. Raj or Mr. Lim or Miss Lee, one of those people. Okay? In my new school, I had no friends. No one cared about me in my new school because everyone had their own friends. No sense of belonging. And most importantly, I was broke. So because of this, I allowed myself to be negatively influenced to the point where I resorted to illegal means of making money. Eventually, I was caught and I was given caning in school. These were my results at the end of secondary two. I mean, I don't know if you can see a lot of fails. Uh, this is me at the end of secondary four. <coughs> I graduated with a fair conduct. Right? So I didn't do too well for my N levels, but I did score just enough to qualify for O levels in secondary five. At first, I was thinking, you know, do I really want to go down this conventional route of taking O levels in secondary five? Because I knew what I wanted to do. My passion deep down as Horrible as a student as I was, I knew that I wanted to help others. I knew that I wanted to do social work. So I found this course in ITE. For those who don't know what that is, it's a vocational institution. And it usually means a longer pathway. And at the time, there were many... <coughs> there were many negative stereotypes about ITE at the time. So there were a lot of protests from family and friends. It was a NITEC course. It was going to be a much longer journey. So I didn't know what to do. My mother came up to me. She showed me an article. This guy, I think his name was Gary. He went to the same course I went to, the same course that I was vying for, the one in ITE. He graduated as top student, graduated with a 4.0 GPA, and graduated with the Lee Kuan Yew Model Student Award. She showed the newspaper article to me and said, son, I give you my blessings. Go and be the best version of yourself in ITE. I said, okay. So I went to ITE. See, up until that point, that joker within me, right before I entered ITE, that joker within me was making every decision for me. For example, when I was in secondary three, when I already lost my, my complete family, I lost my grandfather, I lost all my friends, I allowed myself to become a victim of my circumstances. The joker within me was telling me, hey, a, B, C, D, E already happened. What's the point? You can't change it. You're already going to be like that. You're officially a youth at risk. A gone case. Go. Be that gone case then. So I accepted the reality for myself. Until I came to ITE and I was given the second chance that, hey, look, it is still possible for you to mend this path for yourself as long as you want to. And I discovered that there was a side in me known as the Batman. That I still had the potential to focus on what I can change and make the most out of myself. All right, so this was me. This was me in ITE. Um, so when I was in ITE, 
a lot of things changed for me. I started to study. I started to change my perceptions towards everything. There were many opportunities for me to fall back to my old ways, for me to fall back to become the joker again. And I noticed that when I was in secondary school, whenever I became the joker, the people around me were jokers as well. Because the energy you put out would be the energy you receive. But in ITE, when I chose to become that Batman version of me, I noticed that the environment around me changed. Positive people were around me, driven people were around me, and that drove me to become a better version of myself. At the end of my journey in ITE, like that same guy I saw in the article before I came into ITE, I graduated as a top student, so given the same award, the same, and I got into the course that I always wanted in Nanyang Poly. At the same time, Remember I was telling you about the public speaking competition that I won? In ITE, after everything that I went through in secondary school, I rediscovered the passion for public speaking within myself. This was me speaking during World Speech Day 2017, representing Singapore as a youth speaker. More importantly, okay, thank you. because I was surrounded by people who were bringing the best out of me, I participated in a competition, and just like in secondary one, when I was the underdog in that competition, in this competition in ITE, I was in this competition when I was in ITE, it was a national public speaking championship. I was the only ITE student competing with students from junior colleges, integrated program schools. I became the first ITE student in 31 years to make it to the finals, and I finished in second position. You see. You shouldn't be clapping for that. Clap for me when I cough. Okay, thank you. The thing about that is, a lot of things have happened since then. A lot, I've been through a lot of lows and a lot of highs. But every day, even till today, I still have the battle within myself. The battle between my inner Batman and my inner Joker. And sometimes the Joker prevails, and that's okay. That's what makes us human. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what matters is you assess yourself and ask yourself in this situation, what am I in control of and what am I not in control of? Who am I letting steer the wheel for me? Is it the Batman within me or is it the Joker within me? It is only up to you to change those challenging, sometimes negative circumstances into opportunities for growth and positive outcomes for yourself. What I'm sharing today is not a revolutionary idea. Neither is it rocket science. It's not nothing like that at all. It's just what I've learned through my experiences. And if there's anything you're going to take away from today, let it be this. Firstly, once again, you are your best friend. You are your worst enemy. Your Batman. Your Joker. Your adversary. And your advocate. At the end of the day, it is only down to you to pick out which one you want to let steer the wheel in every challenge or situation that you're facing. Secondly, the power of perception. There's this ancient philosophy called Stoicism. It's a philosophy that I actually really enjoyed reading back then. And one of the core ideas that Stoicism preached is that in all that you do, there are only, it only comes down to two things. What you can control and what you cannot control. When you focus on what you cannot control, you will feel powerless because these are things that you cannot change. But even through the worst of circumstances, you always have a choice. And if it's not for other things, you always come down to, will you let Batman or Joker drive the steering wheel for you? Focus on what you can control. Because when you do that, you will realize that you're not powerless. You can do things to improve your situation and things can get better. Thirdly, Control your narrative. I was a youth at risk. Especially for people of my background, there were a lot of stereotypes for people like me. I could have easily given in. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what, how do you want to paint your canvas as you go on your journey in life? Do you want to be a case of, oh, no wonder lah, he went through A, B, C, D, and F. No wonder he turned out like that. Or do you want to be a case of, despite going through A, B, C, D, and F, he turned out that way. At the end of the day, the paintbrush is in your hands, and the canvas is in your other hand. It's only up to you to paint that. 
Last but not least, I didn't include this in the slides. When you are choosing between the Batman and Joker, you know, you always have to ask yourself, how do I want to build my Justice League? Okay, if you like the Avengers, then go with the Avengers. Huh? <laughs> but how do you want to build your Justice League? Because Batman is in DC. You know, anyone here knows the difference, you know, DC, Marvel? No, no, huh? okay, if you all don't know, maybe ask your friends or something. Internet, Google is very good. Okay? So, how do I want to build my Justice League? Being positive alone can be very, very difficult. What matters is that the environment around you supports that. But the environment around you can only count when you first exude that energy. Positive, you can only bring in a positive environment for yourself. Positive people can only come in your life when you choose to exude positivity. For example, once again, when I was in secondary school, during the, during the worst times of my life, when I was behaving like a rebel, I only attracted fellow rebels. I attracted fellow jokers. My Justice League was full of jokers. But when I went to ITE, and I decided to change, to become the Batman, suddenly I had Wonder Woman next to me, Superman, Superman was next to me, all the superheroes were next to me. Suddenly, I felt driven. I wanted to do better things for myself. So remember, in order to attract, in order to build the Justice League for yourself, you have to first exude the positive energy because things will come back to you. Okay, with that, I'd like to end up my speech with, not my speech, my sharing session, okay? Uh, with uh, a little lyric from my favorite rapper, his name is J. Cole. It's in this song called Night Job by Bass that was featuring him. What he said was, my only adversary was my own mind. Thank you.